Hey everyone, Dan here with uh, the Designer Show on with John Schrader. Welcome to our show today. Um, I'm on the road today. I'm in sunny, sleepy-eyed Minnesota, my place where I grew up as a child, and we're just down here for the day visiting Grandma. So it's uh, we're talking from Grandma's house. John, you're 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 at the schoolhouse there, right? Oh, the schoolhouse. Yep. That's the Dorothy uh, Dorothy's. Yep. Museum. Yep. Nice. Nice. All right. So um, we'll see if we got anybody on the call today. Um, I see no one is logged in yet. So, John, we might you be just us today chatting. Okay. Uh, which I suppose would be fine. Um, <laughs> oh, there we got a couple of people just popped on. So, welcome, you guys. And so today is just unscripted. We'll just talk about anything that you guys have on your mind. Uh, you know, with all that's been going on, I've just uh, been so busy. And I know, John, you've been so busy. Mm -hmm. uh, seems like there's just been a, a craziness out there uh, for people wanting help with their plans and just everything else that's going on. So it's been been kind of tough to keep up to date. Uh uh, I'm hoping next week we can start having some new guests and uh, getting some new topics going. And anybody that's watching this, uh, either live or in the recording, if you uh, have some topics you'd like us to cover, by all means, let us know. We'd be happy to do that. So I'm getting some nasty reflection in my glasses. I'll just have to deal with that. So, John, you got any ideas? What would you like to talk about today? Um, I don't know. I... <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a lot of work with curved roofs. Um, Have you? Yeah. You want to chat about that a little bit? Yeah, we could a little bit if anybody. You, you got a, some, a few things that you might want to just uh, show the world? Just, just some, uh, I don't know, I suppose some ideas to make it so it's not quite so frustrating. Well, give give everybody just an overall sense of how you do a curved roof in chief. And you're talking about a barrel now, not a, not, a barrel. Curving the, not curving the edge of the roof. No, a, like a barrel or a sweeping gable or coming down straight and then sweeping at the at the rafter tails. Mm -hmm. I even did a a curved roof that was pitched up to the house. Um, kind of like once you open up a uh, plan you've been working on and show us what you got going. I know you've been doing some crazy stuff with Johnny, and uh, I don't, he, know, if he's got... to, I don't know if he'd want me to show his plans on online, but I could uh, um, do if some... you got something else you could show. Yeah, I could just start something quick. I mean, I, I could just show the yeah. basic what I've, what I've been doing. So if you want to okay wanna share my screen or what, no, you got to share your screen and then I can put it up. And how do I pick which one I'm going to share? Right. See, so guys on the call, don't you know? Feel free to chime in and say hi and yep. leave a yeah, uh, about this leave a question if you want to. Yep. So okay, can there's you your screen. screen. Okay. So I okay. added you to the screen. I'll make you full screen. So there you go. So I'm just gonna one one trick I've learned is if I'm trying to put a curved roof on an existing house a house that I'm building that I've stopped using the auto rebuild feature of the auto, auto rebuild roofs. Yeah, that's not going to do anything curved at all, is it? It's not going to do what I'm what I'm going to show here. Yeah. What I've been doing is just opening a new plan and drawing a space the size that I want that curved roof to be. Um and then get the get the roof built the way I want it and then copy and paste it into the to the plan that I'm working on. And yeah. That's, okay. That's a lot as far as chief putting it together right and stuff like that. Do you ever draw the space in your existing plan and and then paste that into a new plan in in whole position? Do your that's, work and then paste it back, or are you just kind of yeah. moving the whole roof to where you want it? I you, you could definitely do that. Go pick the walls that you want, copy them, and paste them into the plan. You know that kind of thing. But to do what I'm going to show here, you have to have. Uh, the two side walls. Um, I've had I have some app some places where I have to do this where the roof is there and there's no walls to build it off of. You're just putting in the roof planes and trying to join them together. But this okay. this come up with here works really well. 
Um, All right. So gonna, Scott's so saying he, um, he has a, Scott Stubbs has a home coming up that'll have curb roofs, curb, curb eaves. He says, great timing. Okay, good. So if you have any, any questions, Scott, as I'm going along here, um, make sure you ask them so I can make clarification. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to go build my roof. Just do an auto build roof. And we're going to use an 812 pitch. Let's say, okay. And then I'm going to take these two ends here and turn them into a gable. So now I have my the makings of my roof. So mm -hmm. you got a regular here. gable roof. You've got a regular gable roof. What I can do here now is click on my sidewalls and open them up. And I can go to my structure, uh, go to roof. And now you notice here we have, here we can, can make a two-pitched roof, right? A lower mm -hmm. pitch, upper pitch. So if we click on here, let's say we want this upper pitch to be, uh, a lot of them I've been doing are 16 for the upper pitch and a 12 for the lower pitch. So we'll just put those in there and we'll go ahead and set in where we want that change to happen from the baseline. Let's say we want it to go in. I've made my building 10 feet wide or my roof space there 10 feet wide. So let's say we mm -hmm. want to go in two feet. Okay. So we're going from the baseline two feet. So there, <clears throat> there we have it. There we have the yep, yep. structure of that roof. Why don't you throw up a 3D view so we can see what you, what you just created yep. there. So I just created that right there. Um, looks like it, I didn't get that in there right. So let's go back to the plan. I'm going to put the screen here so we can see it happen. Go back to the plan. Click on those two again. And we'll edit those. What happened here? The upper pitch. Oh, the upper pitch is the lower one. So this needs to be 12 here on the bottom. This is the lower pitch right here. And then the upper pitch is this one, 16. We'll make that 12 and 16. So there, that's what we got. So now I can mm -hmm. click on this roof plane and I can do these both at the same time and click on that roof plane and open those up. And um, I'm gonna lock the ridge height on these. I don't know if that's necessary or not. I haven't gone far enough to see if it makes any changes, but I'm going to lock the ridge height on that because I want that to stay connected there. And then okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I forgot one thing here. I need to go back. Um, I need to go back and grab this roof, edit, and change this to pitch and degrees. And I'm going to copy this pitch right here because it's the pitch of this upper one right here and that's going to be important to make this curve look good so i'm just going to copy that so i have it for a little bit later i'm going to turn it back to, to I I alex is asking is this the only is this only on facebook i can't seem to find the main webinar um i mean if you're watching on facebook you are watching the main webinar or the you know the main live stream but i posted a link in that if you um want to go to our website and watch it you can do that i did not get an email out on this one this morning so i apologize okay. like i say driving to grandma's house um all right so now we're going to go put the curve on, on this bottom okay. piece here so i have those two selected i'm going to hit edit it's been the wrong screen shift well and then edit there we go and then, like I said, I'm not sure this is important, but I've been locking my ridge or whichever whichever height that I didn't want to move, I've been locking that. I hit curve growth, and I want my pitch, my angle at my ridge to match the upper pitch. That's why I copied that degrees. So I can just go yep. paste that yep. in there and say, okay, and I have a beautiful curve growth. Looks good. And you could curve that bottom more if you wanted to, or if you brought it, you know, if you it was in shorter. But yeah, that looks great. Yeah, you just you just uh, have to manipulate those the baseline uh, breaks here and stuff like that. 
to get that to look exactly how you want it to look. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I've so, learned, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say whenever I do roofs like that where I've got to do a lot of curved, you know, eaves on the bottom, we just get the first one in place, get the right curve on it, and then we just copy and paste from that. I assume you're probably doing the same thing. Huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing that I've learned of tricks about manipulating, I mean, this went pretty easy, right? But you go start changing that and tweaking that to something else, you end up with some other issues. So. What I've, what I've, kind of what I've learned is if I put a, I'm going to put another roof plane in here. Uh, Mike asks, do you laminate rip plywood to get the rafters for a roof like that? And, it's like, and I just bend the boards, don't you? Just, just buy cheap lumber that's already warped. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's several different ways you can do that. Um, well, trust plants can make those, can't they? They could. Uh, I the, suppose it cost a fortune, but. The person uh, I've been doing this with, they all do all the hand framing and they just, uh, uh, I would. Well, they're just using dimensional lumber. And oh, they're so ripping they dimensional they lumber. A regular, they put in a regular rafter and then they cut a tail. Um, yeah. A, a thing for the tail to change the pitch of it. So this would be a regular rafter all the way through here. And yeah. then they would cut a piece to, to build up. That yeah, well, yeah, that's how I've seen it done in the past too. Because they're not curving but, the inside. You know, I've, never had the, I've never had the pleasure of building a curved roof, but I've certainly seen plenty of them. Yeah. All right. Trusts are for simple framers. <laughs> I'm gonna draw another roof plane in here, and then I'm just gonna drag it through there, so I can join those two together. Okay. I'm going to. Uh, and have you found that joining them is about the same as joining a regular roof? The valleys, the hips, things like that. Or is that's why what I happens did. when you. Yeah, that's why I'm doing that because this it's kind of there, there's some trick, a little bit of tricks to it. Okay. So I'm just gonna get my fascia height here so I can uh, make those both the same. Did I get the right number there? 94 and three quarters. Copy, okay. And I'll go on this roof right here. And edit that. And I'll lock the pitch and paste there. Okay, so there we're all lined up now. So, one of the trick to making this this join roofs work is you have to have a edge for every single. See, I've got four different edges here on the end here that I need to join. Mm -hmm. So on this roof, I have to have the same thing. I'm just break you know, I've seen plenty of plans where people just pull the roof in like you had it and call it good, yeah, okay. <laughs> which. Yeah, that's which kind of works. I mean, it yeah. looks good. In, in I mean, the we're going to start doing that as, in our design phase of things. Um, but Instead of, until you get it exactly where you want it, yeah. once we get it exactly where we want it, then we'll that makes good sense. Yeah, up. yeah, because once you start making, have you found that? I mean, one of the things I found with roofs is you can't curve a roof edge, you can't put make a roof edge an arc. And when you're joining these roof edges here, um, it's like the valley of that roof you've got highlighted. Mm -hmm. it, when you highlight it, it's not really, yeah. uh, it, it's highlighting, it highlights weird. So, yeah, it go ahead and join it, those. But, and, but as a model, it, it uh, does you, look pretty good. So you're just joining valley to valley now with yeah, the join yeah. two and the, yeah. using the number two key. Yep. And sometimes I've noticed if I, Join the top. You, know, just, you guys notice he's not clicking any icons because he's using the number two key. Right. The two key is the joined, the keystroke for the join tool. So that joined together. You, that looks pretty, pretty damn good. You got one of those white spot there. What is that? I didn't quite take. Yeah. Oh. I, did oh, you get an extra break what? in there? That happened because I did the bottom one first. Ah. Uh, so you end up clicking the same good. valley twice. Yep. Yep. So what it did is it created the it created this arc coming on up here, and then it didn't fix it when I joined the top one. So that's why I, was, I think it's going to be easier and more uh, trouble free if we do the top arc first and then the bottom one. That makes sense. Especially if the top one is straight, because this top part, like, no, that's not true. This, yeah, 
we have two planes here. This one's straight. So do the straight one first and then do the curved one. John, you want to show people how to copy and paste a roof plane uh, so they can get the baseline back in the same place all the time? So, so if I want to make this wider now, you're, you're talking about? Sure. Yeah. Why don't you do that? Just Let's say I want to make my building instead of 10 feet wide, I want to make it 12 feet wide. There's a couple different ways to do that too. Yeah. But I've always found, you know, a lot of times, again, I'll get plans from people that um, the baselines are all over the place. Right. You know, can you explain what a baseline is real quick, so John? This is the baseline right here. And what that's doing, it's showing you. Can you click it. click on a 3D roof plane and show them that in 3D too? Because you can see that baseline in the 3D view as well. Oh, you and your space mouse. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, is that the baseline right there? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I can't yeah. quite. Yeah, yeah. it's Just not showing up real clear. Here. Um, what does it look like on this side? Yeah, it's still, it's still not. It's showing. It's right there. Yeah, the it's the top surface of the plywood of the roof yeah, rafter, right? Section drawing here. It's, you know, if you keep your baselines on top of the outer main layer of the wall when you're moving roofs around, it really keeps your plan a lot cleaner. And then you always know where things are. You know, it's easier to keep your overhangs consistent. And, you know, it's just it's just a nice, it's a good practice, best practice. Yeah. So the baseline is this point right here where the, the, surf, the surface of the framing and the bottom of the plywood meet. Okay. That's so the that's where that green dotted line would be. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's not the top of the plywood. It's the top of the framing. Top of the framing. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So if you're familiar with the term height above plate, the baseline is the height of the wall plus the height above plate. If you're familiar with that term and trust. Sure building techno terminology yeah okay <clears throat> so to move this one over the, the simplest way since i knew that this was moved two feet would be to just go to transform replicate and move it in the x direction minus 24 and that'll pop it right where it needs to go right. show them how to snap it into the right place and then snapping it into the right place we'll just put it back where it was so I'll highlight it. Highlight the whole roof plane. Do my point to point. I'll come to the point so, right there. So you're point to pointing the baseline now, not the roof edge. Right. I'm point to okay. pointing the baseline. So move the baseline, not the roof edge. Now you've moved that whole thing over and you'd snap the baseline right back to the outer part of the wall. Yep. That always works really nice. And you can you can get away with not having the baselines on top of the walls and stuff like that. It, but it's true. It, it it doesn't matter where the baseline is. To be perfectly honest, as long as everything's at the right height, yeah, it's just a nice clean. It just keeps your floor plan cleaner. Now, I'll notice what happened here. I didn't take the top one here, but I can also go back and select both of them. Yeah, at the same time, and use my point to point or my transform replicate, and move them both at the same time. Yep. Group select and paste them there and then I can go back over here, select that edge, hit my number two key and join them back together. Bam. And then I can go up here, and hit my two key and join that to that. Hit my two select key. downtown. All right, so <clears throat> another frustration that I've come across that, that might be helpful for people to have some uh, like if I wanted to change this back to just a straight roof, mm -hmm. which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to take the curve out of this side and watch. It's going to it's going to do it flawlessly this time. <laughs> I've done enough training to understand. Okay. Yeah. But my curve is still in in this right here. So if I hit this and I try to join that, and this is what Dan was talking about when he was saying that the the roofs aren't model see how it didn't move that yeah the line the dotted line is curved but the actual when you click on the roof slab it highlights like that okay so maybe i just didn't have it joined i joined that together now but notice and that took the curve no the curve is still in there it's see on the top part though. there in the dotted lines and you weren't able to join the bottom one there i'm going to try joining this oh, one you didn't, okay yeah, there you go hit the two key 
and see it didn't take the curve out of it even though this side is straight now Can so what you i've use discovered the arc? go hmm. ahead sorry so what i've discovered to do is to take this line right here or this i'm highlighted that line already i'm going to join this line to this line up here to make that whole edge straight again does it so, can you use the arc to curve curve to arc tool um where is that again can't if you hit that click on the line that has the arc in it because you you might have clicked on the one that doesn't so click on that bottom one um yeah does that take it out of there it does so there's there thanks it did. okay you just saved me three mouse clicks thank okay, you you're welcome <laughs> So that does well, I wasn't sure if it would work or not because I've never been able to add an arc into a roof. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's something they've changed or not. So or maybe it's just because of the act of it creating the valley the way it did that it's working that way. But if you try to, if you click on any other roof edge and try to make it into an arc, it, I, I don't think it works. That fixed that too. Excellent. Excellent. So click on the fascia of that roof on, on the gable end. This one? Yeah, click on the gable end of that and highlight that line. Okay. And do we have that arc to line tool available? No. No, okay. So it was only on the arc created by the act of you creating the valley. Right. That That's why that showed up. Okay, cool. At least we know we can take it out of there. Okay. How's the questions going? Am I, am I getting it or people? Uh, I don't see any questions. Um, uh, Ron's got one. I'll come back to that. Go go off to the side and draw another. I'm going to show people. Uh, let me explain a little bit more about this curved roof thing. So go draw another little room like you had before. <clears throat> we'll create a barrel, and I'll explain okay. how that works. All right, so... Go ahead and just draw draw any roof plane going from uh, left to right. Okay. So when, whenever you're creating a roof plane and you, you want to do curved roofs, it, it gets really, it's very confusing what it is you're curving. All right. So can you show that in the 3D? Yep. Why don't you turn off your, your um, browser stuff over there on the side to give a little more room. My browser's on the, on the right there. Minimize yep. that. No, the, oh, the project right. browser. Oh, you okay? You I guess you probably used to always have those open. There we go. All right. So, so John just added a roof plane. Now let's go make that into a barrel roof. All right. So, if you click on that roof plane and open its dialog, the first thing you have to do. Um, is to make it a flat roof. All right, so make it make it a pitch of zero. So lock the height of the baseline or the fascia and, and make it flat. Boom, it's flat. Um, you know, it's gonna see how it puts gutters around all the edges. You know, you can deal with that later if you want to. Not a big deal. However, now if you were to look at the front of that building, so go do an elevation of the front of that building, John, <clears throat> on the floor plan. Well, I guess you could do it there. So what we're about to curve, you know, the, the, the baseline that John drew to create that roof is on one of the sidewalls. All right. Just know that that's not the line that you're curving. You're not curving the line. What you're doing is you're curving the end, one of the ends on the either end of the baseline. All right. So let's, so we're going to click on that line in the front of the building. So imagine for a second on that, on the right hand side of the screen where you see the 3D model that you drew a big circle and that circle would be the curve that you want for that under that arc in fact go into an elevation yeah, job an elevation so i can do yeah. it. didn't realize you were gonna go that direction but go that far yeah i mean once you understand this it really right. helps when you're creating oh. so just draw a big circle on that to be and you know let's get it to be the arc that we want to create that I'm gonna draw that a roof point. So you're going to draw a line and you're going to curve it. There you go. That's just the same exact idea. I want to go. I just that's that. fine. Okay. So that's your arc. That's how that's how you want to curve that roof. So what you want to do now, if you if you click on that the that arc and open its dialog box, you could literally grab the 
the angle out of there, the um, the um, radius. the uh, radius. No, is it the radius or the yeah. radius works? Yeah. Okay. So click OK. And now you go click on that roof plane. So you can even do it in the elevation here, and open its dialog box. And under the curved roof menu here now, you're, again, you're not dealing with the baseline. You're dealing with the ends of the roof on either side of the baseline. So if you paste that, um, if you paste that arc that you've just copied into there, the radius, <clears throat> okay, that's, that's, you're curving that line that's creating that edge. So if you click OK, and of course, probably not going to work, is it? No, oh, there it did. So there you go. So, and then what I always do is I put the square, put the square uh, ends on it under options, is it? Uh, instead of the uh, flush. So under square, yeah, turn that off and make it square. And that usually cleans up okay. It looks a little better, usually. So that's not bad. So, th so that's the concept that you're doing to create a curved roof. So I hope you kind of make that makes a little bit more sense. Now, joining that into a valley, why don't we go try that, John? Let's see if we can create a valley in it. Like you had mentioned before, you break the valley into four, four you know, a piece for each part of your roof. I think I've done this in the past where I've done it into one big valley, I believe. Yeah, that way. You have to get it up so it goes high enough. Yeah, it, won't, it gives you all kinds of grief if the ridge goes above the. Yeah. When you're doing the curved roofs, especially. Yep. So now, if we break that bottom, see, this is where I'm. This is where it gets dicey. Is it going to work or not? Maybe today it will. So then I'll pull that middle part up a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to try it like this because we don't want to have. I'm just going to try it here quick. Try it without pulling that line up. Yeah. Oh, look at that. So it did create that valley. And if I would have pulled it before I did it, I would have had too many edges to for it to. Uh, More than likely. Yeah. More than likely. It wouldn't have worked as easily as so, that. So anyway, as John mentioned earlier, get your roof done before you start joining these valleys. Because once you create them and you have to redo them all the time, it starts to create a mess. Let's all see. right. See what happens if I just break this edge and pull it up like we were going to do it to begin with. Yeah. Well, see, it doesn't. Yeah. Want to, uh, got another break in there. Doesn't want to release from the valley. So that and that's one reason why to get get your just get your design figured out how you want it and then start joining it together. Yeah. So the inside looks good because otherwise, you go to try to modify these curved roofs and it. Just seems like they don't want to do what you're telling them to do. Yeah. So I mean, the join tool works pretty well um, if you're clicking the right edges. I mean, it works actually extremely well when you're clicking the right edges. Key being right edges, and in the case of a curved type of a roof, you know, is it going to be just one single edge? Is it going to be a you know bunch of edges? Um, yeah. Try it that way and see what happens. Yeah, it kind of did the same. Did it? Yeah, it looks like it did okay. Probably because the uh, yeah, it left enough edge down there in the bottom so it could do that properly. So mm -hmm. click on that big roof plane that you just joined into and highlight that. And you'll see that, see the flat area that where you pulled it up? That's still against the bottom. So you're really only bending that top line anyway. Right. So it worked just fine. Uh, I, still, I would I think you'd have better luck if you didn't pull it up. Don't um, join until you got yeah. everything in the right place. Right. Yeah, I agree with you on that. So, um, so there was another cool one I I had to figure out how to do. It was uh, this barrel had a pitch on it. Okay, so the ridge went up like that. You ever done that? What now? The the so if you're looking at this from this angle here, this mm -hmm. rope actually had a pitch on it. Yeah, see now if you if you're changing the angle, so if you go back into that roof dialog now, mm -hmm. and w when you look at the the box below where you just did the arch arc, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing wow. the dialog. 
Am I opening it up? Yeah, open the dialog. Yep. There you go. So go back into this, the first thing there and see where it says on the bottom there. Um, the baseline? Yeah, that's... Now you can change the angle of the baseline that the roof was originated from. Okay, so <clears throat> so that will tilt that whole roof. All right, so you could do that. Uh, so so again, the, the one above it arcs the fascia on either end of the baseline. Mm -hmm. The baseline one changes the angle of the baseline in a view like this. So it's pretty cool. You can create some really, really uh, pretty crazy roofs, uh, roofs if you want to. Now, will it work? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So again, there's uh, get, chief being that, chief. Yeah. How do I get that to model right? You know. It, yeah, that's again where it's like, oh, thanks, chief. You're so close yet so, so far. Close. Oh no. Um, well, what I would end up doing on that probably is cutting. Uh, I would, I would be. Um, uh, turn the fascia off on the gable there and okay. probably go into an elevation and model up a um, some sort of a fascia with the CAD box and then I could angle then I can could so angle that let me create a symbol out of it and angle it what you would do is take this this camera view here and turn that into uh, CAD and then create draw your own picture yep um, another trick to doing these these CAD things here, so you don't have all these other lines in here, is to um, turn toggle your textures first, and then yeah, CAD. yeah, and that makes you gives you a lot bigger lines to work show, with. Show everybody where you did that again. Okay, so we're in this view right here. I, I have it on my toolbar. It's this toggle pattern. Well, that's too easy. Come on now, make it hard for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really that's a great that is a great icon, John. I'm gonna add that, that right mind. there, and I can even come over here and turn off my colors. And now it looks just like my CAD. I'm gonna add that icon to my toolbar too. Yeah, very helpful. Because I always end up going in and changing the uh, uh, going to the pull down for the cameras and changing it to vector, and then turn the color off. Uh, yeah. But I still have the patterns. It's really nice to work without the patterns. What's still, that icon called? It's the toggle patterns. Toggle patterns, okay, and that's also under a pull down up there too, um, on one of those icons up there in the upper right toolbar. Right there. Um, no, it's is it right toggle there? Yeah. It's also on one of those icons next to the cameras. I don't remember which one, um, but there's uh, is it the one where you toggle the exterior walls? Uh, this one toggles textures. That's different. That, that's yeah, that's one. for your render views. Right, um, and maybe it's not patterns. Maybe it's not there. Maybe I'm thinking of the texture I, one. I don't think that one's up there. I think it's only up here, and then I put it on my toolbar because it wasn't right. up here. Yeah, I'm thinking of the texture one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, so then what you do is you um, change this to a CAD detail. And you know, we should have got rid of that fascia before we started because now it's going to give us grief. But um, do you know of any really good way to – join these lines together to get this back into an arc. So what I did, I, I'm using the shortcut key for uh, join lines, which is the yeah. I. So I'm just clicking on clicking on my line, and then I'm just joining the next segment. Yeah. Um, I wonder, so I know they have that one where, where they have an icon that with the lines straight in a row, you can... You can eliminate points in it with that right. one, but I don't that think that do. works. That, that doesn't problem. come up with an arc. Um, are, you, are you telling us that they found something in the questions there? Um, anyone got an X13 beta? Okay. Nope. That's not helping us. Um, we can't cheat and go look at the next version. That doesn't count. <laughs> Plus, Alex, you'll, you'll wonder when, just to FYI, when you get the beta, um, You'll be signing it, uh, and if you haven't applied for it, you should apply for that because they they will you know you could get on the early list if you want to. Just go to a beta at is it beta at chief architect? No, you go into the chief talk forum, and they have a place there where you can sign up for the beta. But they'll make you sign an NDA, so you can't show it to anybody. Technically, you can't show it to anybody, so we couldn't look at it here anyway. <clears throat> 
I don't have an answer for you on that arc, John. Okay. Other than to start over. And then I'm, would, what, what, I'm looking for, why don't I have my make, make polyline solid button down here, my magic wand? Oh yeah, I'm in my CAD. So I'm gonna copy that and go back to my camera. So you made a CAD detail out of that first. Yeah, I made a CAD okay. detail out of this. So that's my fascia that I wanna put on there. Oh good, Alex, you did apply. Okay, cool. CAD detail yeah. and then I'm gonna go. You'll, you'll have fun in the beta program. It is fun to get the early software. I'm sorry, John, I keep interrupting you. Paste and hold, hold it in place and make it into a three quarter inch thick yep. polyline solid. And there's my fascia. Yep. Now, right what you're going to have to do, though, is angle that. Um, so, can we angle that? Can we go that. into an elevation looking the other direction well, and this, rotate that now? Because I know we can edit these 3D slabs in different different views, which we never used to be able to do. It's in the wrong place. So you might... When I put it back in there, put it in the right place. And it's vertical. It's not. You're still seeing the old fascia. Uh, I haven't turned so, it off yet. Okay. Oh, there it is. Awesome. And I can smooth this. I could have smoothed this out on the top here by making that a spline, couldn't I? No, you wouldn't want to make it a spline. Um See, it's got it's got the facets are way. Yeah, I'm trying to remember why it does that. I don't so recall. If I wanted, it, if I wanted you, that, you could convert it to a solid and then smooth the edges in the solid. Okay, it is a solid now. So how do I do that? So if you click on the solid, I think there's a place you can add more edges. Jim says uh, I I located the toggle patterns tool hotkey. How do I put it on my screen? Uh, John, do you want to show them how to do that yep. real quick? Yep. You just go up here. Any of these icons you can grab. Um, actually, you got to right click on your toolbar over yeah, here. So, so you got to open up the customized toolbar menu by right clicking an icon. Yep. Right click on an icon, go to customize toolbars, grab the symbol that you want. I'm just going to grab this 3D symbol and take it up to the toolbar and it's good to drop it on a series of things. So if I dropped it on this one right here, it's going to add it to the, this, this bar yeah. right here. Yeah, you, you don't want to add it somewhere off to the side because every time yeah. you drop a single one, it's creating a new toolbar on your list. So it gets to be a mess. So always drop the icons on top of each other so you're putting them in one toolbar. Yeah, see how John. this bar is moving all together because I dropped it on top of one of those icons. And this yeah. one here is not. And you know what? I've already got my toggle pattern up here, so I don't want it anymore. So I have to take it and drag it back onto here. Yep. Gone. Gone. You done taught me well, Dan. Thank you. You're a good. You're a good learner. <laughs> <laughs> um. I I've been doing some. Uh, if people want to still see some more of this curved roof stuff, I've been doing some roofs where you have to put put a roof into into the plane like that. So I'm going to go do a uh, like a barrel, like a roof that's shaped kind of like kind of like this. I'm going to break that, and I'm going to put a curve on this one, and I'm going to put a curve on this one. So I'm going to make a roof that's shaped kind of like that and put in, put in into this roof here. Okay. So cool. what I'm going to do, since I'm, I'm done with my automatic roof tools here, I, I don't want it to auto rebuild the roof anymore. I'm going to go open a new plan and put and build it in the other plan. So we'll just new plan. We'll draw our th four walls again. And we'll get our width right. I'm gonna. I just want this to go back like four feet. I'm gonna make the building. Like that. Again, so when you're thinking about doing these curved roofs, it helps to understand what I we were talking about before. When you're curving a roof, you're curving the ends opposite of the baseline. Did I say that right? You're curving the ends of the roof on the ends of the baseline. Okay. Uh, yes. Perpendicular to the baseline. Perpendicular, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so 
So I think a lot of people don't, when they're the curving roof, they're going, well, what am I, what is it I'm curving? You're curving the fascia. Exactly. Okay. So think of it this way, you're curving the fascia of the gable end. Right. Another way to think of it. So I'm going to make this a four this time because I don't want that to come up quite so high. Todd says, can Chief do walls that come off a stem wall and, and sill at an angle, say, seven degrees? Um, like this? Is that what you're talking about this? I don't know. I think uh, are you talking about sloping a wall so the wall is not per, you know parallel or per perpendicular to the bottom? Not wall. You know, 90 degrees up. Um, if, you're, if you're wanting to make an, a wall... At a different angle, no. Chief doesn't do that. Maybe one day. The only way I've been able to get that to work is to actually, you know, you're modeling with you're modeling with slabs at that point. Right. Boxes. I mean, you can you can get it to look okay, but you're not building it out of wall tools or anything like that. Yeah. So the key to making this this work that that uh, shape that I drew. I don't know where it went. It's in the other plan. Is to um, still have to have the double pitch, but and I'm just going to make this upper one here um, 3.75, so it's just barely off of the other pitch. Because if I don't make it different, it it doesn't want to do its job. So I'm going to take this pitch right here, the upper pitch right here, and I'm going to. Can you show us that in the 3D, John, so we can see what you're doing over on the right side there? Yeah, I'll actually do it right from the 3D. Yeah, there you go. So there we go. We got that. So I'm going to take this up, this upper one here, and I'm going to go to my curved roof. And I'm going to make the angle at the ridge zero on that. And I'm going to say OK. And this is going to stop my uh, my auto rebuild. And then I'm going to take this. I need to go into this back into this roof now. Can you grab the little? You can grab the little triangle there now and and, and change the curvature of that, can't you? Um, no. And what is that? What is the triangle that we've got We're there? Rotating it. I could take it. Oh. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Oh. Darn! I was hoping. I was hopeful for a second there. All right, so I kind of messed up on this. I'm going to go back a few steps because it's not going to end up looking like I want it. Okay. Let's go back a few steps. Actually, I need to go back to the auto-rebuild. Auto so I'm going to auto-rebuild my roof. Okay, do I still have two roof planes there? Yep. So I want to, I want to go back to my plan, and I'm going to... Get these two outside walls here. I'm, what I meant, what I forgot to do is change where the baseline goes. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go in from baseline, say six inches, and everything else is good. So you're adding that info into the wall. Yep, added it into the wall because right now the wall is telling the roof what to do. Yep. And then I'm going to edit this one and I'm going to put a curve and I'm going to make the radius to framing top. Or the radius, the angle at ridge is going to be zero. What does that do? It makes the top of it flat. And then I'm going to copy this angle at eave because that's going to become the angle at my ridge on the next roof plane. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to open this one. I'm going to show us the 3D again. Um, yep, I can do it right from 3D. So there, there's what I got. So that brought me up to the to the proper arc at the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to do my curve, and I'm going to do my angle at ridge on that one, that angle that I copied from the other one. And that gives me a nice little swooping thing there. Let's just figure that one out. Like Dan always says, never draw to, uh, something twice. Yeah. And copy it and reflect it. Bam. Oh. Beautiful. And then you take that and you top it before. So how'd you figure out those numbers? No, it was just kind of a just got lucky one day. It happened. It's the same principle as when I did that swooping uh, raptor tail. 
Right. You want the pitch of the upper roof to be the pitch of, at the ridge on the lower roof, so that mm. it's in there really, really clean. Um, so we're going to copy that and go back to our original plan. And we're going to paste it. I, I don't know where I drew that in the other plan, so I'm just going to paste it anywhere here. Yeah, and then point to point where you want to move it to. I, yep, I'm going to grab yeah. it point to point. By the way, I'm using a lot of shortcut keys. That's why you're not seeing my mouse move. If you're not doing that and you're drawing a lot, I would encourage you to take the time to get that stuff set up. So there we go. Our facial heights are a little bit off, but I could easily... I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do it unless there's questions for, for something else. Let's see. There's a question from Jim. Uh, is there a way to toggle patterns, only a specific area or speci a specific material? Not that I know of. You probably have um, to turn the patterns off in the material, wouldn't you? It, it, well, it's either all on or all off. Or, or like you mentioned, yeah, you'd have to turn the pattern off on the material. Yeah, you could, good. you know, you could create a few extra materials um, that don't have the, the vector pattern in them. So when you, you know, when you're looking at your building and you, you spray that material on the part where you want to toggle off the, the texture or the, the pattern, but then you could just toggle, you know, spray it back on later. But no, there's no real, just click this button and do it that I know of way to do it. Not helping you much today, Jim, am I? No curved walls, no patterns on and off. <laughs> I'm just going to use my, I, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just going to use my uh, uh, thing here to do some math. So what John is doing right there is he's using that, those, that those cells up there as a calculator. Yeah. So if you're not aware of that, you can, you know, if you have a number and you type in plus 12 or minus 12 next to the number that's in that box, Chief will add it to or subtract it from that. Right. Um, so I came up with I have to lower this roof 6 and <clears throat> 16th to get it to match up with this feature here. And notice mm -hmm. I, it changed the, the pitch of it and everything, but I'm not going to let it do that. I'm going to hit cancel so it doesn't move anything. Right. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I have four roof planes here that I need to move. So I'm just going to select all four of them and go to down to transform replicate and go in my Z delta and paste that dimension in there and say OK. And now it brought it right down there. And now to get this to join into the valley, right? You know, it's all poking through there. It's all poking through there, so it's not going to look good. Again, you want to break it enough. You want to have enough sides to, for every roof plane that needs to join. So I'm going to break it once. And it, I can just break it out here, too. I don't have to break so it. John's just clicking the number three key on his keyboard to add the break. Key to break them. And then that was the best tool they ever changed when they made it. So you could do that same thing. I know. Tool. That's. So I'm just getting these up here. I don't know, Dan, have you found that you, you need to get that angle changed before it'll actually grab it? And Depends. Um, Sometimes, yeah. Um, Sometimes, yeah. So this is, meant this is two rope, still two roof planes here, so I need those double edges on that. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes I think I just thought of I'm going to try joining those together and see if I could just do a single one. But in this case here, we'll do it. We'll hit the two keys. I think for what you're doing, you need both of them. And then we'll hit the them down here see there isn't much left there so i'm gonna no no two key and join it to that and i'm gonna come over here and just for kicks i'm gonna try doing the bottom one first this time and see how it works hit the two key and join it to that yeah, see, that didn't work see i didn't even put the angle the wrong direction so yeah, no, that's that's the idea. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Mike's asking, can that be saved as a drop-in dormer in the library? Can you save roof planes into a library? I don't think so. You can make it into um, a symbol, but then it wouldn't be part of your. If you right. want to make a symbol for just doing design, quick design work and stuff. That would be helpful. Um, Maybe what we'll do. Um, that'd be a good topic for us over in the Pro Academy. 
would be to uh, we should talk about dormers and things like that. A lot you can do with auto dormers to create this kind of a thing too. Hmm, look at that. Oh uh, yeah, so, so I, had my, I probably had my brakes off and stuff all way. Through. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with these kind of things, you almost got to get the edges of really close before you start joining them to get them to come because you got that like you say you got that little bitty piece at the end there that's right. that's going to cause already, some problems it's already reshaped the let's see yeah hold it down okay. cool all right so so we're about out of we're running out of time here um i just wanted to mention to everybody uh speaking of our pro academy um if you're new on this call uh pro academy is uh hang on here a second here mm -hmm. there. kind of salvaged it you got it to work pretty good yep. these curved roofs are a bugger let me tell you yeah that little stuff like you're doing right there can be a real pain yeah see there's something goofing up there there you go now you got it so the importance of c clicking the right edges. <clears throat> oh, yeah. There you go. It's breaking that fascia wrong because of where the, the edge of the roof is. Yeah, you might have an extra break or something going on there that's caused you some issues. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Anyway, the joy. Yep. So have fun with curved roofs. Try not to get too frustrated. <laughs> Yeah, curved roofs can be a real, real bugaboo. Um, let me grab the screen here for a second, John. Let's just chat a little bit. So know that you can't save roof planes in the library as a separate item. Uh, okay, what am I doing here? I'm sharing my screen. Not that screen, this screen. Are you seeing the screen okay, John? Uh, yep. Let me actually, no, I'm not putting that in. Oops. Add to stream. There we are. Now you're seeing the Pro Academy or the I'm this thing the, on the home page. I'm seeing uh, multiple reflections of us there. Now I can see the Chief Expert Academy. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, you guys, we just finished up the classes for, if so if we go into the Pro Academy, crap, can I log in here? Uh, yeah, we can. So when I go to the Pro Academy, um, I just posted all of the videos and everything for the uh, templates that we did, the four, four classes we did. Some of those are getting a little long. Um, some of those are lengthy, but they've all been edited now. So we've edited out all of the fluff and puff that kind of go into these sometimes. So they're they're a bunch shorter, and, and you have, you'll see that all of them have the index down here now. So you can look things up and know where to go to, to you know, you just fast forward to that time code by grabbing the slider and, and get right to that spot. And so, so it makes it easier to find what you're looking for. Um, I'm going to be adding some more here soon. Uh, so I'm going to try to do some real quick, quick ones. So here's how you load, you know, just get you going faster with the templates. Cause I know these can be a little daunting to kind of get into all of those. So watch for those soon. Um, we just finished a pop up here the other day um, called, uh, let me, where did I put that? I'm still working on straightening out some of the menus. <clears throat> so it's called office hour pop-ups. We did one on pole barns. Um, it went, I don't know, some of you guys were on the call. It was kind of fun, but it went kind of long. So I don't, I don't like them to go that long. So we'll try to do some other ones that are a little shorter, but I th a lot of great information was shared on that. I, th I think some of you guys would see, would agree with that. So, but pole barns are not necessarily one of the chief's strong points but chief is a modeling program so it is what it is but anyway uh, yeah so pro academy is open for 297 a year uh, feel free to get in there and uh, have at it and um, i will be doing the metric uh, uh, pop-ups this week um, i'm working on the metric template for those of you that are metric and we'll get that finished so that's just what i wanted to say about that cool John, anything else you want to add? Um, just another, just another idea for messing with these eyebrows and stuff would be oh, to take take, sure. them, take them and turn them into CAD details, and then 
put them on your elevations as CAD details to kind yeah. of see what it's going to look like if you're going to, you're trying to figure out what you want to do. Because again, the more times you manipulate a curved roof to change it, it seems like the harder it is to get it to do what you want. Exactly. So, um, have you ever used the auto dormers to create that eyebrow and then just yeah. use that, use that to get, get what you need? Yep, you sure can. Let me show that one. Yeah, pull your screen up real quick. We got four minutes. Okay. We'll show everybody how to do that real quick. Chief Stormer tool is quite excellent, actually. It does okay. a really nice job, the auto dormer one. Um, no, you got to show your screen. Oh, there you are. Can I, uh, okay. I have a, yep. a building underneath it? So I'm going to build a building quick underneath this. I don't think you need to for the floating dormer. You don't think so? All right, I'll try no, it. I think the floating dormer will join into any roof plan. Okay, I think I, I could be wrong. We'll find out. Auto floating yep. dorm. Yeah. Cool. So there it is. Okay. All right. So, so uh, one, we're not. We don't see that in the 3D on the right there. Can you move that over a little bit? There so go. It's actually, pretty easy with dormers. Um, so so just to quantify that, auto floating dormers are different than the dormers that form a room you have two choices so if you want to get a dormer in try the auto floating dormer first it's it works almost all of the time this one will not work as <laughs> i said almost yeah this one will not work if there's a wall underneath it and the other one won't work if there isn't a wall that's right um exactly so, so you can go in here and right here you can go change this to um curved eve or a barrel. You can do a barrel right here right away to just do it. A, a curve. Exactly. Yeah. You can go to a curved eave here and change your second pitch. And why don't you show the barrel maybe like you had just created before? Oh, but cool. there, yeah. So there's a curved eave. That's a two part roof that that John just created. Okay. So I'm still building so this. I haven't, I haven't exploded this yet, so I can still change it just by editing it. So what John is referring to is exploding. When you're working with the dormer tool, the dormer is kind of one piece. It's like a symbol, like a toilet. You can stretch it out. Um, it, but at any time, unlike a toilet, you can explode the parts of that dormer by clicking the explode button. And now you'll have walls, doors, windows, or walls, windows, roofs, holes and roofs that you can modify. So that works really well. So now why don't you go ahead and go ahead and blow it up, go explode it. I just had an idea. I might start using this more. To get your roof started? Yeah. Use it, yeah. Use, yeah I, really, I, get, I do that all the time when I need a special kind of roof. And then grab my roof plane and take it to my other plan. There you go. So there's the roof. I can move it off of there now. Yep. So now it's just parts. Now the walls will be gone because there's not a roof over the walls. Because and in this particular... The plant, they're not drawing up to it. It's right. Different. In this scenario, the, the walls are set to roof cuts wall at bottom. So if there's not a roof underneath the walls and on top of the walls, they won't show. It's kind of slick in the window. How's that set up? Is it set up to... You can put multiple windows in these dormers now, I do believe. There was a point where we couldn't. We had to explode yeah. them to make it work. Yeah, you definitely can. Um, and you can even put yeah. multiple windows in it before you explode it. Right. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it's pretty easy to change stuff because you can start doing it right away. You don't have to. And it, it kind of does it automatically. Um, yep. But once you've exploded, exploded it or separated all the parts from each other, you can't do anything automatically anymore. Yeah. Cool. Nice job, John. So, all right, you guys, thanks for being on the call today um, or the webinar, live stream, whatever we want to call these things. Um, again, I'm here in sleepy, sunny, sleepy, I, Minnesota. That's my childhood hometown where grandma still lives here and I have a sister in town. So we come down and visit every now and then. So it's just nice to get away from Dodge. And uh, cool. We'll see you guys next time. And let us know if you have any topics you'd like us to cover or any guests you'd like us to have on our show. With that, I think we'll call it a day. Everybody have a great weekend. Thanks, everyone. Bye.